One, two, three, five, six, seven. 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 <laughs> so obviously I'm not talking about the food. <laughs> uh, I couldn't figure out what to talk about for, for the speech, so I was like, well, let me talk about the only thing I did this summer, which is, was I attended Arizona Dance Addiction in Phoenix two weeks ago, just to improve my dancing skills. <laughs> So it's also like I was counting one, two, three, five, six, seven. It's based on eight counts. Counts four and eight are silent, and the music repeats itself every eight counts. Salsa was developed in New York, but it has influences from Cuba, Puerto Rico, Colombia, different countries. So at first I thought the word salsa came from, and a lot of people think this, they think the word salsa was coined because it has a mixture of different influences, like a salsa. It has all these different ingredients. What I learned at Arizona Dance Addiction is that Salsa was coined by the record labels in the 70s to sell more records. They wanted it to sound like the next spicy thing in music, the new thing. So it was created as a marketing tool. But how did Salsa came about, come about? So this song I'm playing is from Celia Cruz, a very popular Cuban singer, also known as the Queen of Salsa, who died in 2003, won several Grammys. And the reason I'm playing this is because Salsa traces a lot of its origins to Cuba. And how did it start? How did partner dancing come about? It was a revolutionary idea in the 18th century. It started in the Western European courts. And it started with something called Contra Danza. So if I can borrow Kyle. <laughs> and partners would dance at arm's length. Men would dance behind their back. And you remember I said the eight count? Well, this was the first dance that was a partner dance. But it was the first dance that was dance one, two, three, five, six, seven. 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 And it was dancing in a circle. One, two, three, five, six, seven. The couples would look at each other very formal. The Spanish, thank you, Kyle. The Spanish brought this dance to Cuba. And then with the Haitian Revolution in 1791, a lot of Haitians came over to Cuba and brought an African influence to Contra Danza. So Contra Danza became what's called Danzón. It was characterized by a lot slower dancing, a lot more movement of the hips. A lot of the European elites, so this was carceral, this type of... <laughs> <laughs> they said this is from the slaves, and they didn't want to dance that. But it slowly started gaining more and more popularity. It was based on a lot of percussion. So I'll play some percussion. So this came about in the 1870s, Danson. Then Danson eventually became what's called Son. They had even more African influences, danced a lot slower, danced a lot more with the movement of the hips. And like I said, the elites, you know, they didn't like this. They thought this was corrupt. But it was a new thing and it gained popularity. Cuba was a very popular tourist destination for Americans during the Prohibition Movement in the 1920s and 1930s when song came about. A lot of record labels started going down there. A lot of tourists started going down there. A lot of artists from New Orleans, New York started going down there bringing the influences back, signing Cuban singers and Cuban artists to record labels, record deals. So songs started gaining popularity in the United States. But jazz came along in the 1920s, 1930s, and it started eclipsing songs. So what did song do? Well, it just fused some jazz into song, and it became what's called mambo. And I don't know if people have heard of Palladium Ballroom in New York City, which is very popular from the 40s to the 60s. It mm -hmm. made Latin dancing very popular. People went there to dance mambo. It became very popular, and it added the piano, and it added elements of tap dance. And so if you listen now, I add some piano. It's characterized by foot movement. Some of the shines that we call now that I learned in Arizona, you can't see too much. But a lot of one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. So added those footsteps the dance, but Mambo didn't have any structure. Like I'm counting this one, two, three, five, six, seven, you dance to the feel of the music. Which a dance I learned about was Kizomba, just dance to the feel of the music, it's hard to dance. But Americans like structure. <laughs> <laughs> so a guy named Eddie Torres, which was a Puerto Rican, living in New York in the 1970s, 1980s, came along. And he created what was called Modern Mambo, which is also known as on two style salsa, or New York style salsa. So this also became very popular in the 80s, 90s. And when I say it's danced on two, that means you're breaking on the two count of the music. So when I say 
one, two, three, so you're breaking back on two and not exaggerating, and you break forward on a six for the men. The women are different. So that's New York style salsa. Eddie Torres made this very popular, a dance company started coming along, and this became the very popular dance of salsa in the 80s and the 90s. But in the 90s, a couple of West Coast professional dancers created what was called LA style salsa, which I actually don't know how to dance New York style salsa. I fooled you guys, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was learning a little bit at this conference, so I danced LA style salsa, which is salsa on one, which is taught to most beginners, because it's a lot easier because you break forward on the one. So it's easier. One, two, three, and you break back on the five. So it's a lot easier, but it's danced more popular here on the West Coast. But if you go to places like New York, they dance more on two style salsa. So those are the two main branches of salsa music. You have on two, New York style salsa. You have on one, LA style salsa. And also you have other forms of salsa, which I'm from Miami, so you have a Cuban influence over there in Miami, and they dance what's called Casino Ruela, which what I was doing with Kyle, dancing in a circle. They dance a lot quicker, of course, but Ruela is dancing in a circle, because on one and on two is dancing a straight line. You're going one, two, three, five, six, seven. Everything I'm dancing is in a line. I'm going back, I turn my partner, we're in a line. But Ruela is dancing in a circle and you're changing partners all the time. So let's dance a little bit more where there's a more heavy Cuban influence. So I just wanted to introduce some of these topics to you. Obviously in five minutes I can't cover what I learned in three days in Arizona. But I just wanted you to know about the history of salsa. If you decide to go out to a club, the different styles of salsa you'll find on one dancers, you'll find on two dancers. Cha-cha, which a lot of you may know about, came from Mambo in the 40s and 50s, so it preceded salsa. So that's some of the origins of salsa, and if you ever want to go dancing, just let me know, or if you want to more, know more about this topic, I have a PowerPoint that I got from the Arizona Dance Addiction that I could send <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. There was nothing about your speech that was a carcerel. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> speech number three in the basic CC manual for those of you who are guests is called Get to the Point. There are 10 basic speeches that we go through when we join Toastmasters. Each one has an objective, and that was his objective today. There was a general purpose. Two of the four items that you could have chosen, one was inform, another was entertain. And you did those beautifully. A specific purpose, a one-sentence statement about what you hope to accomplish. You really got to that at the end of your speech when you said, I just wanted you to know a little about salsa. But what you did so beautifully was from the very beginning when you had when you had the music, you got out and you moved around and you got us into this. This is actually the focus of a later one of our projects, project number five, where we use our body, but you already are doing that beautifully. You had therefore a great beginning, and I loved the meat of your speech where you combined demonstration using Kyle as your partner for part of it, the music, and the history of salsa, and how has it developed, the various names, the various decades, fascinating information. That was the information part. Throughout, you were entertaining because we were enjoying ourselves. I think everybody here certainly was enjoying yourself. You also had some very good humor throughout, so we were laughing with you, not at you. A couple of, <laughs> a couple of suggestions. I would have liked to have seen you say right at the beginning your specific purpose. I want to tell you about salsa. I was just in Arizona and I learned all about it. Something like that. To get us clear on what your speech was. The second thing is you could have been bigger. And that was one of the phrases that one of my mentors used. Bigger meaning louder, more expansive when I was speaking because I would tend to be a little on the quiet side. I think my points about like this. But she was always saying, Fred, be bigger! And so you could have been bigger when you said, we went to the Mambo, and then we went to Cuba, and we went to various other dimensions of that. The third suggestion is, there was an element of nervousness that I picked up, just because I was watching for it very carefully. It wasn't very obvious. I think the main reason was, in about a five to seven minute speech, you tried to pack a huge amount of history into it. I would have suggested, if you could have slowed down a little bit, breathed a little more, you would have been less nervous, paused a little more, sort of the general recommendation we give for all ourselves to be better speakers. Calm down, pause, 
maybe make a few less points and make them with more vigor. Wonderful speech overall. I look forward to the next one, whether it's a dance or whether you're going to be jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs>